All right. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah, this game goes pretty well. Okay, I like that you didn't just rush in at Popo. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, the, the lesson with Zuppy confirmed a mm -hmm. lot of stuff I thought about the matchup, but... Like... Yeah, it looks, so far it looks like you're pretty much following the Zuppy lesson pretty consistently. Um, one small detail is right here, you should always do a delayed double shine. Be uh, okay. Because they a lot of times will uh, buffer a shield grab, or just like Nana can buffer a shield grab, or they'll just be mashing. Right, and so right. you hit their shield here. Usually, just the double shine is a good way to prevent them from potentially grabbing you out of this. The full hop is okay, also, but the double shine there is really, really good. Right. Okay, yeah, when you're in these situations, so. Something that's probably the most difficult part of this matchup is knowing when to continue trying to gimp Nana and then when to go for Popo. So it's good that you're going for the Nana separation and gimp like right here. This is this is good. You shine Popo away and you try to get Nana to the other side of him and you're doing this. But when Popo is doing these, like when he's like over committing to attacks that um, he doesn't really need to be and it's just really easy for you to punish him. A lot right. of times you can do something simple like just, um, you know, grab and back throw him, or you can falling up air and then then just go and gimp Nana. Gotcha. That makes sense. So yeah, if you ever if you're ever trying to go for Nana and Popo just does like a really obvious whiff, it's usually best to switch to him. A lot of times, even you can land like a falling up air here and do like falling up air, up air, up air, and then like Nana will try to chase kind of where he is in the air. So, right. like, you'll be up airing him, and she'll kind of run to the edge of the stage, and then, like, while he has time coming down that, that he has to spend, you can just shine Gimper. Right, I can just hit her. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah, that was okay, I guess. That, that happens. That's a very difficult recovery yeah. to deal with. Yeah, that was... Should I have, like, waited and up smash there? Um, let's see. Because usually I just go for the shine on Popo, but this time I kn knew he was going to side B, but I'm still pretty bad at punishing him on side B. He goes like this, you come up. Um, so the, the back air here definitely wasn't the play. Um, the th one thing is that, like, if they actually do this up B here, like, Popo is going to be in lag for, like, an hour. Right. Because he has to, like, get pulled by the tether, and he has to go way up here, and, like, honestly, you have plenty of time to just shine Gimp Nana and then fight Popo. Right, gotcha. So, like, yeah, like, if you hadn't hit him with this back air, then he would have been stuck in lag for a really long time right here, and then you could yeah. just short hop off or, and shine Nana, and then he'll be stuck up here, and he's still coming down by the time you're, like, he'll be on, like, top plat or coming down while you get back to stage after the shine. So you'll, yeah. you would just be winning there. Overall, your game plan is, is looking pretty good. Um, this is something that everybody falls for. Like, you're never going to be able to, like, do this perfectly. But when Popo is in the air, he doesn't have good falling options. Mm -hmm. His only good falling options are down air and fair. And fair is really the only one you have to worry about from like this height unless you're jumping into him like a lot of times what will happen is you try to jump up and up air him or back air him, and then he down airs suddenly and you get kind of caught out of your jump and then you're in a little bit of an awkward spot but normally you can still get like the punish but the fair is the only one that'll actually like turn things around for him like out of the down air the best he can basically get is like a you know even situation maybe if you can call yeah. it that so when he's in the air it's very easy to, like, hit this 
like hit this up air and like it's it's easy to start treating popo like nana like you hit nana up here and you're like oh now i'll hit popo you know like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. very easy but like this fair is like their primary get out of juggle tool like it is like their critical option basically and it's reactable so you just have to if you're ever in this situation where you're like you have a chance to shark popo watch right. very carefully to see if he forward is because right. if like it's just, it's something you can easily react to this is like super free dash dance up smash or whatever right or so like anytime or anything yeah anytime you're sharking and you are in front of popo just don't gotcha. like don't look at like the macro spacing as much because like you'll win pretty much any macro spacing like right just pay attention to does he do this right. <laughs> and if he does this days. just move around it and hit him but like i can't stress this enough this will happen like at least once a stock every stock for like the rest of your career against life members like this right. exact situation where you have to react to their fair so this is just like the main like top three reaction points in the whole matchup is to be ready for this fair right should i just treat it like a uh a mar fair where if i'm no, because Marth Fair, Marth Fair isn't reactable on startup. Oh, uh, okay. It's closer like... to reacting to a Donkey Kong Fair. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, like, not quite that bad, but, like, it's pretty close. Like, um, let's see, what's kind of reactable in, like, that spot? Maybe closer to, like, reacting to, like, a Falcon Stomp, like a worse Falcon Stomp. Right, right. Or something like that. Like, you just have to be super ready to, like, react to it. And, yeah, it's kind of yeah. like Marth Fair and, like, the area that it covers or whatever. But, like, the hitbox yeah, is yeah. really bad. So, as long as you don't jump into it or, you know, the most common is you'll, like, up smash them or something. And they'll both be kind of in front of you, like, at this height. And then you mm -hmm. run in to try to punish. And then they do a fair. And you get hit on the ground miss tech they jab reset that'll happen right. like that i'm sure you've had that happen a lot of times too yeah. mm -hmm. and then yeah these are this is where the matchup is really fun and interesting and complicated is like this shine is really good and then right here this you should have shined nana again it's just really hard to like know exactly what you should be doing here yeah. um so like but another option is so if nana is gonna grab ledge here she is at or popo is at 43 percent. so nana so do you um so the way that her get up attack works is it zero is at zero damage zero to 20 damage on popo she has a 100 percent chance of get up attacking at ledge if you're at this distance and mm -hmm. then um each 20 percent that popo has her chance of doing a roll goes up 10 percent so if she's at 43%, then there's like a 20% chance or 30% chance that she'll roll off. But most of the time she'll do a get-up attack. So if you've already made the decision not to try to catch her before she grabs ledge, you should be setting up in some way to catch her get-up attack. Right. So the forward smash here is just a bad move. Like, it doesn't really serve a lot of purposes here. You're not like... If you feel like treating this as nana grabs ledge and i just fight sopo then like you would want to fight sopo with like you know actual moves that are relevant instead of a forward smash so oh, yeah. it's just not something you'd really want to do there and yeah so in this case like you know the forward smash even hits popo but it's the weak hit and he falls away and nana just gets up anyway so oh, yeah. just maybe not the most effective move choice good back air good mm-hmm yeah and like this is something that's just this is just like a lot of like yeah small misjudgments and like i can't even like you know it's not something i'm like oh you should be hitting these it's kind of like yeah so ice climbers and situations like this just have so many situations like it's actually ridiculous how many possible slight variations in edge guarding and stuff like that that'll come up right. um your goal should just be do your best to identify situations and try to maximize the percentage of the time that you can get them. So, Popo up being from this distance, this is always something you should wait for. Because Nana is going to be coming up first, and she'll be invincible. Right, so, anytime, right. anytime Popo drops below here, and he can't side B, your, your idea should be, okay, I'm going to wait, because he'll pop up, or Nana will pop up, and then Popo will fly past her, and then I just get the free shine on Nana. 
it was like yeah the past situation where i did the yeah it was the, it was the same as earlier in the the match where like look at this so she does this little wall bounce and then you have a free shine against her here or she might actually just be yeah dead. i think she still does yeah right? she's just literally dead here but like just always keep in mind that like if popo is up being from below the stage like this you shouldn't be going for like the forward smash type stuff the forward right. smash type stuff is when you hit them with like a back air right here and you think they're gonna mash side b okay. then you can forward smash right right this situation's free because i can react to the mm -hmm. up -being yeah if he's up being up low here. he's he's dead like gotcha. that's just it okay you have the roll back air edge guard into the up air really good really good i like that a lot cool. very correct yeah i started doing that this set and i was like this seems really yeah, good. small note side platform is better right right yeah you saw that in the zuppy lesson yep. Good, good down air. Good reaction to the situation coming up. Okay. Okay, good. You're camping Popo. That's that's correct. Yeah. Good. <laughs> uh, definitely watch out with these full hop drills. They don't really do a lot. Oh, yeah, no. He starts messing me up for the full hop drills later in the set. And, yeah, you're trying to grab him. Honestly, it's just kind of like... You just sort of wait for Popo to overcommit. Just sort of j jump around. Like, he can't really punish Full Hop very easily. If he does, he, like, super opens himself up. Like, he's trying to play reactively. Like, notice that he's not, like, reading your Full Hops. Like, when there's both of them, they're a lot more comfortable reading your Full Hops. But as Popo, he's really scared to, um, like, right, overcommit. Over so they sort of play really conservative and, like, reactive like that. And, like, you just have to just sort of play also really defensive. Like, his wave dash is so big... Um, you can just look... Yeah, the short hop drill there isn't bad. But basically, like, he just has really annoying combos on you. And it's best yeah. to just it's best to just play it safe. It's it's very... It feels kind of degrading to, like, play it safe. You're like, yeah. bro, his character's awful. Like, why do I have to play defensive? But it's just sort of how it is. It's kind of imagine, like, you're playing against, like, Roy. Like, right, you, right. you can't... You, like, Roy is really bad. But if you rush in and just try to hit him, like, you're going to get down tilted. Because, like... His tools aren't that bad. They're only bad if you play around them. Yeah, yeah. So, a small detail on that. And obviously your goal is always to get Popo off the ground with, like, an up throw or something. Yeah. Uh, one small note is you haven't up tilted all game. And I didn't really see a situation necessarily where you should up tilt. But I should at least see, like, one or two up tilt attempts probably. Okay. During, during yep. a game. Okay, how'd you get hit out of this? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I saw that the first time, it's okay. Oh my goodness, Slippy. Uh, yeah. yeah, so here you <laughs> usually don't want to break physics. No, just <laughs> okay. Uh, one small thing is uh, don't wave dash in, in movement. Because his wave dash is huge, so if you wave dash and he happens to wave dash and down smash at the same time, then you're right, in danger. I, I'm just in lag. What it's you really like want to do out. is you want to sort of dash dance and play it safe, and then you full hop, and then he'll go for like a wave dash in down smash, and then you just eventually can punish that. And That's then um, a lot of times you'll full hop, he'll wave dash and down smash, and you have an opportunity for like an up air or something, and that's really good. And sometimes you don't, and you only have the opportunity for the back air. But the mm. key with that is to cross up the back air. Like, if it looks like you're going to hit him to the right, you should always hit him to the left because he'll usually just omps attack it or slide off. So uh -huh. just something to keep in mind on the back air, the full hop back air there. But yeah, Popo is just... I hate fighting Popo as Fox. Very annoying character. Because yeah. he's so bad, but you can't abuse it. You can't, like, directly yeah, right. abuse it. You just have to... <laughs> what? Yeah, Dude, uh, Slippy is Slippy is freaking out right now. Okay. So now we'll do the Dreamland game. Uh, it should be Stadium. Oh, it, it's the Stadium game. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. let's do this one. Uh, he goes Link? Let me... right, but... Was that an accident? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does not counterpick Link. 
Is this the right one? Yeah, no, these are the wrong videos. This is Falco Fox. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm pulling up the stadium game right now. Okay, just saying. Okay. Okay, so obviously this stage is by far the best stage uh, outside of FD. Like, this stage is incredibly strong for them. Um, it's pretty good for Fox too, but without the transformations, it's definitely not as good as uh, it could, it was before. Or like right. before, it was kind of like yeah, they do well on standard, and then they don't really do well on transformations, and so now they just sort of get like to play the standard game here. Um, you have to watch out a lot coming off the side platform on top of them on this stage because they're usually ready with their up smash or short hop aerials. Up smash hits on the platform on this stage. Which is like the big the big deal here. So they're just a lot more ready to sort of attack onto the platform, and they're not really usually gonna like turtle as much on the ground. Like if you sort of go up on the platform, a lot of times they'll play a lot more aggressive just because of the low platform height. So it's right. just just something to watch out for. And yeah, that happens. Kind of get hit out of that. Okay. Yeah, this is sort of like a tunnel vision situation where, like, you have Nana separated and you're going for the kill, but you don't actually have, like, a winning situation here because Popo is so close to you. Like, there were so many points here where you could have easily gotten wave dash jabbed, like, wave dash jab grabbed or wave dash down smashed. And so it's good that you've split them up, but when you split them up and you're not in a directly... Um, winning neutral situation where like he has to really rush and overcommit to save Nana and he's kind of in this spot where like like you have Nana behind you and then Sopo's in front of you and you're not really close enough to the edge to like push her off immediately kind of think right. of it as like you're playing neutral still but you have a hostage so it's kind right. of like if like, don't see this as, like, I have them separated, I need to go for Nana right now. What you want to think of is, like, okay, there's, like, some big tension here. Because Popo is, ha like, they have to worry a lot about what I'm going to do to the Nana. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like just having Fox versus Popo. Except Popo can't play as passive as he wants to. Like, when you have no Nana and it's just these two characters, Popo's like, dash, dance, wave, dash, dash, dance, wave, dash. And he plays really, really passive, and he wants to get you to whiff. But um, in this situation, he can't play passive. And so you want to sort of be more focused on Popo here than Nana. Because then stuff like this starts happening, where it's like, if pretend just ignore Nana for a second here if you're just watching Popo and he does this you're like okay I'm gonna immediately you know run in and do something to Popo here like you could short hop drill shine Popo here then Nana runs in to save him and you shine and Gimper. yeah or even yeah, like I also... yeah or here sure. you also what oh I just could have not faded into the blizzard too mm -hmm. if I was and and so okay so a situation like this the problem, if you shine both of them here, this is actually like a savable situation because you'll be shining them together. So the fact that Nana doesn't have a double jump doesn't matter because she's not in tumble out of the shine. So this is yeah. a situation where you want to up air. You, you, oh, okay. you would definitely want to tech chase up air here because the idea is, so there's two main ways to get rid of Nana. And there's the ideal one, which is Popo stays at low percent, therefore Nana is less dangerous, and you just get an early, like, 0%. You shine them, they separate, you run off, you shine Nana, right? That is ideal. Yeah. But the second most common situation for killing Nana is you up-air them, then you get up-air, up-air on Popo, 
and then he's way high up, and then you just casually gimp Nana while he's on his way down. A lot of times, he'll be on his way down, Nana will, like, full hop or something, and then he'll do a fair, and then you just either back air him, up air him, up smash, up tilt him again, and you just sort of keep it going, and it's sort of like, you, you have to... As you damage Popo more, you have you have to pay more attention to Nana being like scary. But yeah. the thing is, Nana will never move to try to find a position where she can hit you. All she does is try to get closer to Popo, and if you come within range of her attack, like she will only throw out an attack if you are in range to get hit by that attack. Mm. That's how Nana works. So and she doesn't start doing aerials until Popo is over sixty. Okay, over six. So, in in general, sometimes she does weird stuff, but usually, you know, you got to play the odds with this character. So usually, yeah, yeah. Nana will not actually do an aerial until after sixty, I believe. And so, and percents like this, if you you don't see the the obvious opportunity for the low percent gimp, but you do see a chance to juggle Popo, you should take the juggle Popo opportunity and then just be a little bit more aware of Nana. And then, what he can do, like I said, he can basically. You're like, I want to get Nana now. I double up aired Popo, so I'm, I'm going to go for Nana. And then he's like, well, I'm going to fast fall forward air. And you go, okay, fine. So you hit Popo away, you up smash Popo away again. And you just sort of keep going for Nana. And you just have to watch out the fact that she's getting a little bit more dangerous. But as long as you're, like, aware of it and don't, you know, tunnel vision on the fact that you're juggling Popo, you should be in good shape. Right. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> mhm. Mm not a lot you could do there. Okay, good. Good. Mm. So this is sort of difficult to recognize, but I would like you to try to see this. So there's moments where they move forward too much, or they are in this... So there's two situations. So basically, like, if they move forward really fast, like, let's say they wave dash forward, or they dash attack, there's, like, this... You know, Nana is on a six-frame delay, so if they wave dash, Nana is always, like, a little bit behind Popo. And if they um, dash attack, she's also a little bit behind Popo. And there's these moments where you can drill them both, and then one of them will be on the left and one will be on the right. And this is like, this is like the, this is like the the candy of the matchup. This is like the perfect yeah. situation that like when you see this, your brain should be like, oh, there it is, you know. Yeah. So when you're in this position and Popo whiffs a grab and you see this coming up. This is like the most ideal spot you can possibly have for drill shine. Yeah. So you right. obviously focus on Popo so that, you know, they can't hit you. So you should try to drill right here and then you you go for the drill, shine, and then they're basically guaranteed to split and you'll have a guaranteed kill on Nana. So that's just right. something to keep in mind. Whenever you see them and they're they're disconnected, but they're really close and you can do Oh yeah, this is this is actually that exact same situation. But whenever they're disconnected, yeah, but they're nice. close, you want to be looking for the drill shine because it'll split them. Right. Like, yeah, very yeah, cleanly yeah. split them. And yeah, so this is... This is sort of that thing, again, where you're going for the shine. Right. And so then I tunnel when on you, Nana. When you're, yeah, you're tunneling on Nana when there's a very juicy up air on Popo here. Or... So your two options here are recognizing that you can you can shine popo out of the way with a drill shine because if you drill shine popo here rather than the full hop shine then i don't think do you full hop shine here yeah you full hop shine but then the problem is is that there's not enough time because right. you have to you have to double jump out so it's like if you instead did a drill shine here so there's two options here so right. yeah so there's this your two options okay. here are up air and then go into what I talked about, which is, you know, yeah, the, the yeah, high damage, yeah. the high damage situation. Or mm -hmm. you can drill right here and then shine Popo. And then, you know, you wave dash out of shine instead. And now this that is like a much more dire situation for them than if you do the full hop shine. 
Right. Because th- this, unless you are in a situation where this hits both of them and Nana goes left and Popo goes right, the full hop shine on top of them is not that good. If they did a double dash attack together and you see the opportunity for the possible split, but maybe you're just feeling weird about the drill for whatever reason, then the full hop <laughs> shine is not bad to get the, the big split. But in this case, you know, it's not very good. And then you come in here, but yeah. he could have literally wave dash down smashed you and you'd lose a stock potentially yeah and that yeah you're just tunnel visioning here super hard yeah, yeah. definitely watch out for that and the, the i think the reason you are tunnel visioning is because you're not like there's no awareness of that second higher damage like common situation for killing nana yeah yeah so yeah, i think yeah go yeah, ahead yeah this set i just yeah i think i the last set we played i like was pretty out of practice in the matchup so like all my kills were like messy high damage ones mm-hmm. so i was like and i had been practicing the nanakins so mm-hmm. yeah, i think i tunneled on that super hard yeah the nana it's kind of like a like a layered thing where it's like you want to get really good at like the early damage nanakins and stuff like that because when you're really good at that obviously you're going for that that's like the best thing you can get and so you're going for that, and then if you don't get that, like they they sorry the like the fact that you're really good at it makes them play around it, right. and then playing around it opens them up for the higher damage ones. Right, because Popo will overcommit more. He'll overcommit, and you can just sort of even if he doesn't overcommit, the pressure of you like moving Nana off stage while still playing neutral with him is usually enough to just win you the neutral situation. Oh, yeah. right here, this is an up tilt. I still haven't seen any up tilt, so it's good to keep in mind. Uh, this is for sure an up tilt. 10,000% yeah. an up tilt. And yeah, like going for shines like this, this isn't this isn't worth anything. Like this shine. Yeah. Because you're shining you're shining your back towards him. And yeah, it's it's easy to get that. Yeah, so then here, it's it's funny. You you get this, and then you're like, okay, but now I'm not gonna tunnel vision on Nana. I'm gonna go for Popo, and it's like this is where <laughs> this is when you really want to go for Nana because she's close enough to the edge where Shine will send her off, and Popo has to spend time coming down from the platform before going out. And regardless, if you choose to go for Popo here, which is not bad, like you're still winning the situation, you definitely want to up here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was probably like, I got hit by Popo last time, so I'll go for him this time or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing is, it's not, uh, it's not a situation where you really have to mix up. It's kind of like, this is an interesting matchup. Most of the situations you're in are not actually, it's not, it's not as much about tricking your opponent as it is about re- realizing what situation is happening and reacting accordingly. And yeah. so, the, like, most matchups, the difficulty is just sort of baiting out their character and understanding them. But in this matchup, there are almost every situation will have a right answer. But actually coming up with that right answer quickly and knowing the situation is, like, the hard part. Right. That makes sense. Good. It happens. Mm. Like, I'm not gonna... I know you know how to punish them. <laughs> yeah. Not bad grab. And yeah, this just... Ah, oh, this match... This is such a frustrating thing. Like, without Nana here, it's just you end up in these awkward spots. But... I think just sort of... Don't... Like, once again, like... Don't feel pressured just because your character is better than him or better than your better than his. Like it sounds really weird to say, but like I know exactly like what you're going through here. Like the pressure yeah, yeah. of like I should make something happen. Am I really gonna camp Popo? And the answer is yes, you are. <laughs> like that is the right answer. Is you should just be camping him because his character is worse than yours. Yeah. Okay. Yep, sometimes that just happens. They have a nice mix up there. Should I like try to bait that out when they're desynced like that? If that's like a thing they commonly go for. This? Uh no, the when he had Nana Blizzard and then he did the wave deck. Yeah, so the thing is is you 
I think you focus too hard here on the fact that she's blizzarding. But if you look at Popo, you can see him posturing for this ahead of time. Because right. he's doing walk forward, wave dash back. And so, like, it's definitely, like, you should know in this situation. Like, if you think about it from the Ice Climbers perspective, they're using Nana to prevent you from coming in. And this forces you to remain somewhere in this space near the edge of the stage. And they're doing the wave dash back, walk forward with Popo. So they're either threatening... They're threatening the mix-up of wave dash back, full hop back air, wave dash back, short hop back air, and wave dash back, down smash. Right. And so, usually, in these situations, I think the best thing is to sort of get as close to the blizzard as possible and then give up more space because you know that like it's very clear they're going to kind of come in and then if the when the blizzard ends then this sort of posturing he's doing is not nearly as good so you just have to be really aware of this yeah because yeah, it's like it's like extremely it's like they don't have a lot of ways to set up the kill there so he's just going for that okay good oh so close so close you full yeah, hop here instead of short hop if you yeah. short hop here, this is guaranteed. Yeah. I think runoff would have worked too, but uh, I'll see. Yeah, but the thing is, is so you end up here when... Yeah, it, this was sort of... Okay, so you had opportunities to actually kill Nana, but then when, when this happened, like... The thing is, is it's very tempting when you're here to be looking right here. And like, okay, I'm going to get Nana. But th she's not your threat. If Popo didn't exist, you could do this with your eyes closed. Yeah. This is the threat. So you have yeah. to... When this is happening, if there was an eye tracker that you had, I guarantee you your eyes would be right here. Yeah, definitely. And they should be here. Because if you were watching Popo here... Like, the idea is... I would even say when you're practicing gimping Nana, try to just yeah. look at a different part of the stage. And just sort of do it out of the corner of your eye. Because if you were paying any attention to Popo here, this would have been a super bad option by him. Like, watch. Right. If, if, just watch here while we're doing this. You see him. He's, oh, full hop, up air, up air Popo. Or full hop drill. You could have full hop drill, shine, Nana grabs ledge. She, You don't actually know which options she'll do from here. You don't actually have a guarantee out of here. I would probably just up air, up tilt here. Yeah. But you just have up air, up tilt. You have all kinds of stuff. So it's like, this is sort of level like you're reaching like level two in the matchup or i i don't know i don't know what level to call it but basically like i went through this phase two where you get really good at the early nana shine kills and then you just ultra tunnel vision on her so the yeah, next yeah. level is just being able to autopilot this while paying attention to popo yeah i'll definitely practice looking at popo okay bad for Whoa. I'm kind of going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have just up aired again, right? So, yeah, this up air is fine. Um, no, actually. So, after this up air... Well, actually... So, okay, there's a couple things that could have gone differently here. The first one... Okay, I'm not going to say you should react to this grab. So, you hit the up air, but you have to be watching him. The thing yeah. is, is, like, remember, Nana is dead. Like, she, or, she's, like, she doesn't have any moves. Like, at this percentage, below 60, she will literally, like, she doesn't use aerials. Her right. entire, like, she is basically a volleyball. Like, from melee volleyball. Like, she will go up in the air, and she will come down. That is not what you should be focusing on when there is a character who is controlled by your opponent. Right. I think that that's sort of logically follows but it's so easy because like she's just right there you know yeah. she's so vulnerable and it's like yeah she's vulnerable but you have to think about the threats to you so if you were paying attention like, once again to popo here after you hit this which i think is this is not a bad option to hit nana here so you hit nana and then he does like i would say that it's probably even better to literally just up air nana here and then see what popo does right because, like, so then because you do this, then I don't really get why you did this, but... I think I may have been trying to drill his... Um, yeah, you're trying to drill Popo here, dash, right. Then I hit Nana. Mm. 
Yeah, it happens. Mostly just be really aware. Like, if you up air Nana, think about it from the Ice Climber's perspective. So you're playing against a fox, and you whiff a grab, and he up airs your Nana, and your Nana is right here. What you're thinking is, he is going to try to hit Nana again, how do I stop him? Right. And so by going for Nana immediately again, you're playing into what he wants. More, yeah. you should, but you have, it's one of those situations, again, kind of like when you have, it's like when you have a hostage, you know? Like, you have Nana here, you have negotiating potential of like, listen, Popo, I can't approach you, and you can't approach me. And he's like, right. And you're like, but I've got your Nana. So right. if you don't come after me, she's just going to keep getting hit. Like, you can just stand here and she falls. You could up tilt her. Like, you right. have all kinds of things you could be doing to Nana right here. And so the pressure is on Popo to make something happen. And you can use that in neutral to get a win where you normally wouldn't have one. Yeah. So try to use Nana as more of like a, a like a bargaining chip in neutral rather than getting her separated and being like, gotta go for Nana, gotta kill her, gotta kill her. Right. The right, kill on yeah. the kill on Nana is nice and you want it, but going for it too hard is greedy. And if they yeah. couldn't punish that, they would just be a bottom tier character. Right. Right. Yeah, like yeah, I think thinking of Nana as like um a bargaining chip against Sopo makes sense. Yeah, that's really important to keep in mind. Okay, so this happens, you get the shine. So this is a tough one. So, like, it's crazy how many interesting situations come up in this matchup when trying to edge guard. Um, so, in the moment here, this is so difficult to actually do the right option here. The actual right option here is... This is, this is crazy hard. So, the actual right option is shine, grab ledge roll from ledge then popo comes up up air popo and then shine give nana yeah, okay. or actually it looks like you actually found a way past this with the back air so i think the safest option is if you're in this position is to just grab ledge and then probably roll off because you know they have a lot more lag than you yeah. With his up B, they have so much lag. Like they're not. There's no universe in which they can like get to ledge or anything from here. Like Popo is going to the stars. Like he's he's gonna be way up here. So you have a lot of options. Your main goal, pretty much your only goal in this situation. The only thing that can make this work out for them. Like literally, if you're here and you just roll off ledge, like they're they're in a horrible spot. Like they have yeah. this super laggy recovery. They're both gonna be vulnerable. The only thing that can go wrong here is for you to get hit by Nana. Mm -hmm. otherwise you win like straight up there's nothing they can do you win the situation so by yeah. going for the back air you're sort of like well i want this situation here like it's kind of just like a reflex that like a character is up being here and you want to back air them right like that's right. true against every character in the game pretty much except for them and so it's just very tempting here but remember if popo is up being from below the stage you should just feel like, oh, like, I, I literally have, like, an hour. Like, I have so much time to do something when Popo pops up. Like, I don't even have to show you in the game. You know, it, it takes a long time. <laughs> so your priority here is always safety from Nana, because she's invincible, until she reaches the peak. So yeah. you go for this back air, and somehow this back air works out. The only problem is that you drifted a little too far in and got hit. So, like, this is sort of, like... it's it's in, On one hand, it's hard to blame you for this, but on the other hand, you should just go for the safest thing here. Right. So this was almost this was almost good. You, you, you used Nana here as bait, which is what you should be doing, where you're like, look, I'm going to hit her, and you're kind of waiting to see if he jumps up at you. But then right. he doesn't do anything... So you can just hit Nana here. Right. And yeah, this is another one of their main buffs on this stage, is they have ice blocks off the platform. These are infuriating. Oh. Um, there are a few options you can do against ice blocks. You can dash attack them. Mm. Like, there are ways to clink with them that aren't too bad for you. Um, 
obviously, like, when there's a bunch of them coming like this, it can just get really awkward. Um, you can dash attack them and then just full hop afterward. I think, um, honestly, though, I would be pretty comfortable here just jumping up to the platform. I don't really, right. like, I don't really see a problem with it. Is this the same as FD, where you were saying in the other lesson, never do, like, a full hop in the middle of the Yeah, stage? I actually, I thought like, about that. I thought about this right yeah. here. So, the slight difference here is that there's a bit of a threat of you landing on the platform. Even though your spacing yeah. doesn't land you on the platform, there's no way that they're going to be able to react in time to that. So, yeah. it's not quite as bad here, but I still don't think this is a great backer. Yeah. For the, for the same reason. It's just, you're, you're not playing in an advantageous spot. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see here. Yeah, if they if they ever jump up to the platform, if they ever full hop like this, don't worry about hitting them until they already come down. Right. So just wait a little longer, that would have been easy. Yeah. Okay, do this. That was an up tilt. Uh, after the up B, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right here, up tilt. Yeah. Okay, you got that. See, notice that... So what happens here is you get Popo, you hit him, but now Nana's at level 3. She's at kind of an irritating percent. Uh -huh. So what happens is you're watching... You're, you try to go into probably Shiner here, but she jabs you. The best op option in these spots is... Yeah, yeah. So... Hmm. Okay. So a lot of times I think the best option when she's like this is probably Driller. Right. And the reason just that it gets you the shine without you having to go into her jab range because she doesn't react like a person. If you run at Popo and shine him, he doesn't he can't like react in time to get you. But if you en the frame you enter Nana's jab range, she can potentially jab you. Right. And so she doesn't have any options that really beat short hop drill, like instant short hop drill. So I think that a lot of times is better to go for here than the trying to run and shine One when you're doing the higher percent kill. This was a good up smash to get him out of the way. So then right here you get jab. I would probably just short hop drill Nana and then take her off stage. But you get this. This is also like acceptable. You know, maybe not optimal, but it's fine because you're once again saying, look, Nana's in the air. She has a potential to die. And now I'm just going to juggle Popo. And yeah, this is this is good. Yeah. So you, you basically it went slightly wrong and then you recovered the situation and then played it correctly. Okay, cool. Yeah, I would very much avoid the double jump stuff here. Right. The it feels kind of gross, but your best option in this situation is you want to bait him to come into the corner. Like, when you're doing these full hops, this, you kind of want th these situations with the backer that he's doing. But what you, do, you want it without him being invincible. But the thing is, is, like, let's say he does this. Like, even when he's invincible, this is still what you want. And the idea is you full hop like this, but you don't drift in. Because he thinks you're trying to full hop drift to plat. Right. But you just full hop drift back, which is correct. But then right here, grab ledge, ledge dash. Yeah. And you win the situation every time. I could just, like, ledge dash shine him. Mm -hmm. You don't need to ledge dash shine, though. You you can ledge dash shine. But if you had just ledge dash here, like, you're winning. That's all that's important. Like, you, you can yeah, ledge dash up tilt. You can just ledge dash dash to center. You can ledge dash up smash. You can do anything here. Right. Because then they're cornered. Like and, that's... yeah, and, like, sort of you're jumping here again, but it's kind of like, if... If you can get him to do this, this is when you come to the ground and then, you know, you don't want to really come in from above right there. Okay, good, good. You got the short hop, everything. Yeah, that was all good. You know, it's a little bit messy, but like, that's just kind of how this matchup is. Like, you're not, you're not going to get the cleanest Nana kills ever, every time. So this is good. He could be doing a better job punishing you here. Um, he doesn't, you get the, you missed the back air, but this all works out. So as long as this works out, that's fine in my book. Okay, good. You go for the up throw up air. So they can double jump out of the up throw up air, but I still recommend going for it every time because Popo in the air with no double jump is in a worse situation than he almost might be getting hit by the up air. <laughs> so, right, right, right. so like if they actually just double jump out of this, like you're totally fine. So 
yeah, the going for the up air is good there. So this was a little bit tricky by him going for the tech here. I, I give him points for this actually. Yeah, once again, really, really like you should every time you double jump here, slap yourself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> like like you this will lose you important matches. Like the thing okay. is this will this you'll get away with this so many times until you don't when you flew across the country. <laughs> so don't don't go for these. I'm just like limiting my options. Yeah, it's just it's purely just like Man, I really want to fight Popo. I don't like because you you full hop. What what happens is you full hop here, and then you're like, well, man, I full hopped and he wave dashed out of the way. That's if I land, he can down smash me. Nope, just go back. <laughs> like it feels bad, but just do it. Like the thing is, is like yes, you have to play passive, but he has to play passive with a worse character. Right. Good down tilt. Down tilt is pretty good against ice climbers it's a weird move it's hard to really it's kind of like down tilt against marth like is down tilt good against marth it's like yeah except for all the times it gets you killed so <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. see a really good spot to use it then use it but i wouldn't like spam it but i think that was a good use of down tilt that you did okay and um yeah on this stage i actually think that this is mostly acceptable the problem, so there's trade-offs to both of these positions, here and here. So obviously this is the FD position. Although, yeah. I would say you probably want to be more here so you can easily wave dash to the edge. Because this puts you in a situation where you don't really want, you can't really wave dash to the edge easily. So I would say roll to the edge and walk forward a few steps until you're like here. Just makes your life a little bit easier. So the downside on this stage of this so the thing is is if you go up here obviously if you go up here it's tricky because he has wave dash full hop back air stuff here like just the way the platforms are set up it's not like a big over commitment for him to do this because you can't get like a free nana kill if he misses like on yoshi's if you're up there and he full hop back airs and you drop below the platform He's just going to die because you're going to shine him and you'll get a gimp out of it. But on this stage, yeah. you're not really going to get it. So yeah, like this position isn't quite as strong. But the problem with going to the edge here is he gets his ice block things. And I'm actually really happy with him. Most ice climbers are not smart enough to know that they should ice block <laughs> here. But this is by far their best option. Okay. What did you say? Oh, yeah, I was... I was just agreeing. Yeah. yeah, so this is really frustrating because it puts you in kind of this awkward spot. And yeah, you just kind of get beat on here. But he doesn't really capitalize on it. I think you both acted fairly well here. I think that um, getting hit by this is actually not that bad. And he full hops, so he you're like, oh, he full hopped. Okay, sick. Like, <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that was, that was fine. And uh, yeah, this was fine. This, this just happens. So you do this. And yeah, this will happen every now and again. This move is very annoying. Um, obviously, you could you should have been able to punish it, but this this like this happens. There's never gonna be a point where this stops happening. It'll just kind of happen every now and then. You just want to minimize the amount of time that it does happen. Okay, is this the dream life game? Let me send next one is field. What'd you say? Yeah. Oh, I I just sent the next game. Oh, it's not the dreamland game. Yeah, the Dreamland one's just a hand warmer. I, oh, I sent back I see. one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got it. But yeah, it should be Battlefield. It is Battlefield. All right, sick. Okay. So this is good by you. You're not immediately... So... <laughs> there are multiple ways to start off the match. And I think that both dropping as an opener and staying on the platform both have merits. The one thing you don't want to do is immediately go for center, which is good that you, you see that. But so that, but the thing is, is if you pick platform here, so the, th the thing is, is they have a lot of opening mix-ups. So they actually start out desynced. Mm -hmm. And so they have potential like buffered openings. And so staying on the platform is basically saying... I might take center and then 
you're you're looking for because so, they have basically cheese in center. Where if you if you start the match by running down here to center, which is the most like obvious logical option, mm -hmm. then they have these like oh Nana ice blocks Popo wave dash off forward airs. Like they have all these. They have Nana sort of blizzard. They have all these kind of weird options in the center. They have a lot of them, and so it's best to sort of like avoid this position. But when they do actually take center with some kind of cheese here, you need to be ready to punish this. Gotcha. Right. So if I do platform, just react if they, if they yeah goes. like like because the thing is is like let's say you take platform and they decide not to go to center here and they drop oh then you take center you know and yeah. it's kind of a similar thing on the ground here the thing with being on the ground is if they go for an ice block opener then you just have to deal with the ice block and take center but like neither of those are bad for you it's just you have to be ready if if they like they're they're looking for you to make a dumb mistake and come to center so they're kind of they're kind of cheesing by doing this. And so like if you don't punish the cheese, you let them gain an advantage. Like that's kind of how it works. Like if somebody goes for like a commitment that's not a good idea, but then the other person doesn't actually punish that commitment, then it was a good idea because they just got a bunch of space for free. Right. So like the fact that he's kind of going for this cheesy fair off the plat, if you don't punish it, that's fine, but then he gets away with cheesy fair off plat. And they're, yeah. like that's a free punish. So, okay, that was good. This was all good. Did, mm -hmm. So, this is a little bit of an awkward spot. You sort of like read that she's gonna jump from ledge, I think, and I don't think that's a very good bet to make. Um, normally, if I'm in this spot and I end up here. My idea is usually to do a shield drop or run off fast fall attack on Popo. Because okay. Nana is delayed on the ledge here. She's going to do something. She's going to do one of her four options randomly. And so I... Oh. This this is, like, maybe, like, a slightly less um, frantic hostage situation. Where, mm. like... He's a little bit pressured because if she does a regular get up from ledge and you shield drop shine, there's going to be some big trouble. So he doesn't right. really like there's it like let's say you dash to this edge of the platform and then he reacts by wave dashing back. He's going to probably does. lose Nana because you'll just do this like do. Yeah. And so he has to play pretty aggressively. He doesn't really have to super commit here, but he also isn't in a position where like he can, like, play nice and passive. So it's kind of that same hostage situation again. Actually. Okay, got the split. Crazy that Nana rolls here. Basically, the chances of Nana rolling here... Let's see. Actually... No, no, no. What happened? Okay, so I was gonna say, I thought there was, like, a 0% chance of Nana rolling here. But I... It's, so I don't remember if there's a zero percent chance of Nana rolling at zero, or it starts at or it starts at ten percent. I'd I'd have to look it up again. But I'm pretty sure what actually happened here is I'm pretty sure she chooses her roll option when you're far enough away. So this is just like a random a random roll. Yes, yes, she chooses the roll when you're far enough away. So this was just like a one out of four. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because when I was practicing them, she was rolling a bunch. And I was wondering why, but yeah. Yeah, if probably... you're not if you're not within like this distance, she'll choose ra a random option, with all equal probability. What is going on here? One sec. So you, you do this. You got the split. Yeah, she, she, the roll happens. That'll happen. It's just kind of chaotic. Okay, you go for the full hop. Yeah. Um. I would say, like, you're kind of in this zone where you feel pressured to, like, fight it out, like, over and over. But, like, it's it's pretty okay to literally just go up to the platform and sit there and do nothing. Yeah. And, like, something that's kind of good is you just wave dash to a platform, like, full hop wave land, and then just hold down. And, like, if you're CCing on the platform, they don't actually have anything to do to you here, really. Okay. So if you if you feel so this is kind of, like, a key that um, a lot of people miss in this matchup is that, like, it, let's say you're on a side plat. What people think is my options off of side plat are come down, jump to center, or jump to top plat. But they forget that staying on side plat is actually stronger than all three of those. <laughs> so, like, it's okay 
to play neutral on side plat and just kind of hang out there. They don't have any threats on you, and you can just sort of look for some good openings there. And the thing is, is these options where you come in like this or like this or go to the top, these are all good. But the thing is, is that don't feel pressured to choose one. Because if you feel pressured to choose one in every situation, then they get to just also choose one and have a one-third chance of murdering you. Right. But if you get, if you're like just dash dancing or you're just kind of chilling on the platform, they don't have any way to contest the platform. And if they also can't read you going to these because you're not doing anything so like let's say you're just dash dancing here they also have to sort of play very passive and neutral they can't commit to these because there's no chance and then when you actually do choose after dash dancing for a second and a half on the top plat once you or the side plat once you eventually do drop or run off or jump to the top plat or whatever they have to play a pure reactive Whereas, like, if they have to react to your movement and then do an action, whereas, like, let's say you jump here, and then, like, like what's happening here is, like, you're here, you're jumping, there, there's, like, no chance here of you just, like, playing passive, like, he knows, like, look at him just throwing out moves, because he knows, he knows that you feel pressured to play moves. Like, look at, whenever you see the Ice Climber player and they're just doing this stuff, it's, it actually really annoys me. Whenever they're just doing, like, this or whatever, like, and they're just kind of throwing out moves, that's when they they can feel the pressure. They can feel that you feel pressure to fight them. And, like, you're both kind of throwing out moves and, like, just a lot of combat is happening really fast. That actually favors them. Yeah. And even now, like, remember that first game when you had Popo? And you were just sort of passively dash dancing and you were kind of like, come on, you know, like, let's go. But now you're like, kind of like looking to make things happen. As soon as you start spot dodging against Popo, I would actually say this. As soon as you ever spot dodge against Popo, go to a platform for like five seconds and just be like, come on, come on, come on. Like, don't don't play like this, you know, Right, right. because okay. like you can play passive against Popo. He cannot do anything to you directly. But if you start feeling like. You have to, there you go. You went back to passive a little bit. This is that which is good. Good, good, good. Much better. Good. Punish him going for the plat. Okay. There's that double jump again. There's that double jump. I better hear that slap. <laughs> and the spot dodge. Yeah, yeah. You, this is total like freak out mode against Popo, and it's just like. The thing is, this happens to everyone. This happens to me, too, you know? And it's just something, like, you have to remind yourself, look, Popo can't pressure me. Like, go chill out on the side plat for a second. You know, take a breather. Yeah. Like, it's okay. There's that double jump. Yeah. Don't do it. And it's like, okay, so, like, look at this Look at this position where you're on the side plat. Watch, watch Popo. Like, what does he have here? What does he actually have to even hit you? He literally doesn't even have a single move here that can possibly hit you. And so he's just chucking stuff out. And if you yeah. were playing passive and you were waiting, these are free yeah. punishes. These are all, like, punishable actions. But because you're also going for stuff, it's kind of like, you make a choice, Popo makes a choice at the same time, and then neither of you can punish the other. And right. it's kind of like, Popo right. has more committal options than you do. You will win the slow game. And you just have to right. have faith in that. Right, where if we're playing the fast game, it's like the only way he can open. So the the problem here is that you don't go for the side platform early enough. That's the problem here. Okay. So remember, they start desynced. So to sync, they have to land on the platform first, and when they do that, and you're already on side platform, that is your cue to drop because then they can't get to the ground fast enough before their invincibility runs out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I should just already be on the So edge yeah, after I get a kill like this, I will literally yeah. go to the platform and I will roll to the edge and I will let go of the controller. Got it. Yeah. Because the problem is, is you let them sink and then you go, oh, right, all right, side plat. But it's too yeah. late because they have wave dash up synced back in. Yeah. But that's, that's the main idea here is that if they... So if you're already here and they do this land and then that you see them start to move back, you can just drop and run to this side and they don't have a single punish ever. There's like nothing they can do. Their invincibility becomes worthless. 
So just sort of keep that that 50-50 in mind. Not 50-50, but like that sort of tree branch of like reaction patterns in mind. Right. Okay, good. 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 Um okay. Remember that when you go for this, he's going for this. Yeah. Like uh you like you don't have to go for this second up air here because so the thing is going for it's fine as long as you made sure to get underneath him. But because you don't, then this will happen. So I think it's more of an issue that you should have just gotten directly underneath him before up airing. Mm -hmm. You you don't need to feel pressured to hit Popo as quickly as possible in the air. Like he, right. you can kind of like let him sweat. Like he has to come down eventually. Yeah, yeah this happens. We're about at an hour, but I'll finish up this game quickly. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Man, if she sees it, crazy. Yeah, you're kind of in that zone where you're sort of just hitting. You gotta be hey. careful about that. Also, practice ledge dashing. Yeah. I haven't seen you do a single ledge dash this whole set. Mm. Yeah, I flunked that one. Yeah, it's okay. That happens. You had the right idea. Yeah, this is... You just got too, uh, too antsy. A lot of this is just antsiness. Like this, like, remember that thing with the platform? Yeah. Like, there's no... Like, look, he's just way dashing back here. He's not, like, doing anything. So you just sort of put yourself out of position by feeling the need to commit. Like, it's just, like, a neutral loss because you committed first. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> ledge dash, like, free win. Like, look at this. Like, this is the most free win ledge dash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is like, um... You, what you want to do here is just protect the stage. Protect the stage and be careful not to shine them both at the same time, because that'll re actually Popo doesn't have a jump, so if you shine them both off at the same time, Popo will just up B and then you get that low up B situation. But okay. don't overcommit by jumping out here. Always just like Popo can't grab ledge from this; he has to land on stage. So as long as you defend this vertical line and don't go past it, you'll always shine him to the left here, and you'll be fine. So if you had just dropped and shined right here, he would have definitely fallen off, and you would have gotten a Better edge guard situation. Gotcha. Okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah. So this is that thing. Just, just to keep in mind one more time. If you are on the side plat, don't feel pressured that you need to transfer to top plat. Right. You're, you're less safe doing this transfer than you would have been staying here. Yeah. I I like the way you're playing it right now though. It's not it's not bad. Like maintaining the neutral like this is totally fine. Okay, good. Up airs. Okay. Tunnel visioning on Nana. Popo was your opponent right there. Alright. I think we can call it there. But um Yeah, so we went over a lot of a lot of info. Um the main, the main things to focus on are recognize when you're not going to get the low percent kill and then go for the high percent kill. Like, practice gimping Nana without looking directly at Nana. Right. Um, pay attention to Popo and look for possible openings there. Um, recognize when you want to full hop drill shine rather than full hop shine. When you have a guaranteed opening, a lot of times the drill shine is better because of the spacing or because right. you don't have to you know double jump out of it. Um, going to side platform early and watching for the land on side plat um, and watching for the low up B and just playing it safe because it's such a good situation for you. Okay. So I think those are the main things to go over and you could rewatch the lesson to see a lot of the smaller details. But uh, yeah. 
overall, I think that's a pretty instructive lesson. There are like a lot of small things to work on. It's, I'm really glad you watched the Zuppy lesson ahead of time, because otherwise I sort of end up going over like those same things that I would have in that lesson. So it was nice that to see that like you already have basically internalized a lot of the stuff from that lesson, and then I was able to sort of go over deeper stuff in the matchup a little bit. Yeah, yeah, no, these both were super helpful. It's good. Yeah, it's good to know, like, my game plan was in the right direction. I just need to implement a few more. Yeah, just, just keep going and keep solving more nuanced cases. But, all right. all right, it was nice talking. I'll send you the payment information in a second. So, hope you have a good one. Later. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye.